blustery day, wet day, bring us a Lord, cloud the storms passing over, <laughs> bring us a, a God's good, he's looked after us, in the name of the Lord.
God bless you that you're here. It's wonderful that you are here. You know, it wouldn't be the same without you. That could mean anything either way, by the way, but it would have been worse if you weren't here. Let's just put it that way. So we're glad to see you. We're glad that you're here. And we're looking at chapter one of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul wrote this letter to a church in the first century. And we're looking at it in our Bible studies on Wednesday night. And we're calling it Philippians for you. Philippians for you. The book, the letter of Philippians wasn't written to us, but it was written for us. There's things in here for you. There's things in this letter that God wants to communicate to you, that he wants you to take on board, that's going to enhance your life and be a blessing to you. Isn't that exciting? Come on, say a big amen if you want. Philippians for you. Now just listen to what Paul says here. Verse 7. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all. Because I have you in my heart. And as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. You are all partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. That you may approve the things that are excellent that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And then in verse 12, Paul says this, but I want you to know, and here is the beginning of the purpose of Paul writing this letter. There's things he wants these people to know. Verse 12, but I want you to know. This is the reason, one of the reasons why he's writing that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Just note that. That's what Paul wants them to know. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest, that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And we're going to just stop there. As Pastor George prayed, may the Lord bless his word to every one of us tonight we're looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians and we're doing it in a different way a systematic way and you know that can be helpful because it covers so much and it covers a lot of things and it really is a comprehensive way of really looking at the biblical truths that are laid down in the letters and in the books of the New Testament. Last week we began by looking at Paul's opening salute to these believers in Philippi. He saluted them. He encouraged them. He commended them for their faithfulness. He really gave a salute for their support in the gospel. He marked it and also to their support to him personally. It meant something to him. And also for their fellowship. And those things are still important today. We need each other. We need to support each other. Perhaps more than ever in this generation. There's enough discouragement. There's enough to turn you apart. The people of God should be out to build each other up. And these people done that to Paul. And he saluted them for that. He went out of his way to commend them for their support. But as we move on from that tonight, you know, this next 
section has something of interest for all of us because if you listen to what Paul says in verse 9 in particular, he says, On this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Just note that for a minute. Let that come to you for a minute. And here's Paul saying, this is what I'm praying for you. And you're dear to me. You're special to me. But this is my prayer for you. So when he says this, it's important. that Here's what he prays. This I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Paul's prayer for these people was that their progress in God would not halt. Paul's prayer for these people was their progress in God wouldn't cap off. He really wanted them to abound more and more and more. Paul wanted these people to keep going in the things of God. And Christian tonight, can we say that to you? God wants you to keep growing in Him. God's will for you, even these days, among the pressure of this age and the complexity of this age and, and everything you're dealing with and everything you're trying to draw, juggle, the will of God for you as a child of God, your son of tonight, I am a child of God. That's what marks you as a Christian. That's what defines you. It's not your struggles. It's not even your victories. Because you'll have victories one day and you'll have a struggle the next day. What defines you is this. You are a child of God. And God wants you to go on in Him. And Paul knew, this, knew that for these people in the ancient city of Philippi. My prayer for you is that you will abound more and more and more, he said. He wanted them to keep going in the things of God. He wanted them to keep growing more and more and more. And this I pray for you, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. I love how Paul says more and more and more. You know something? God has more for us. God has, it's not exciting. Does not thrill your heart. Never lose that. Never lose that thrill. Never lose that excitement. God has more for you. Paul talks here about more and more and more. And God wants to bring us more and more and more. And Paul said, I want you to abound more and more and more. I think this indicates the depths to which we can go in God. The depths that you can go in God. They are immeasurable. They are infinite. There simply never can come a time when you can reach the full measure of what God even wants for you in this, in this life because there's going to be something more every day. More and more and more. But just look what Paul said here. He said his prayer was that their love would abound more and more in knowledge and discernment. You know, love is everything. Love is everything. Someone once wrote a song called Love is All You Need. He wasn't wrong. Love is everything. And love is everything in the Christian faith. You know, when I was a young Christian growing up in Belfast, and, and we, we weren't from church. We were brought in the church culture. Our culture was in the back streets of Belfast and in the streets in the, in the late 60s and early 70s into the mid 80s when, when we started to come to church. We weren't from church. We weren't brought up in church. Our culture was power. Our culture was surviving. And we were brought into a culture where Christianity, Christianity said, love is everything. And, you know, for me, it took me a long time to appreciate that because there's a big part of me that thought that love was kind of a weak thing and a benign thing and power was the main thing. And I knew 
God was all powerful, but I also had to appreciate He is all loving. And by the way, when you mature, you understand that love is the greatest power in the very universe to me. It really is. The Bible says God is love. He has power, but He is love. And love is everything. Love is everything in the Christian faith. And Paul knew this because look what he actually said here. I pray that your love would abound more and more and more. In all knowledge and discernment. And I think that's interesting because on the surface you don't think of love as being associated with knowledge or even discernment. And Paul defines something here about love. He says, I want your love to grow more and more. But then he, he adds something, two elements here, knowledge and discernment. And that's interesting because you don't think of love being associated with knowledge or even discernment. Love can seem like a sentimental thing. Something that's just there or not there. And it's hard to define. But Paul was affirming that their love was founded not on something sentimental, but on something substantial. And he says, I want, here's my prayer for you, that your love would abound more and more in knowledge and in discernment. And he's saying, this isn't sentimental, this is substantial. And brothers and sisters, we need to take that on board tonight because our Christian relationship with the Lord isn't that either. It's not merely sentimental or superficial. It's substantial. And it's really based on those two things, knowledge and discernment. If we take our own relationships, you can see the same thing. The greater knowledge we possess of someone enhances our love from them. You get to know someone, you don't really know them, and then you get alongside them and you get to know them, and then you see you value them because you get to know them. You see, it's enhanced with knowledge. It's like your spouse, maybe. I really want to be careful what I say here. I have a dinner yet. I make a small offerings later on. But someone says, why do you love your wife? Oh, I love my wife with all of my heart. And the next question is going to be, why do you love her? And then you're really on the spot. <laughs> you say, well, I love her because she's kind. And I love her because she's so selfless, so gentle, so generous, so thoughtful. My wife, she's incredible. <laughs>
but a greater understanding of the attributes of the Lord will lead to a greater love for him. Getting to know the Lord, even through his word, will lead to a, that's what Paul's saying here, that your love will abound more and more. Then he adds, here's how it's going to abound, by knowledge and discernment. And a greater understanding of the things of the Lord will lead to a greater love for him. Honestly, my folks, please appreciate that. And we're not talking here about a knowledge, and I think I need to say this, we're not talking here about a knowledge of debatable or controversial issues that don't profit. You know, we've known a lot of people in our lives who are bogged down in, in controversial things and debatable things, but they don't profit. All people do is fall out over that and argue over that. That's boring. That's not the knowledge we're talking about. Oh, I'm right, I know more about this subject or that subject. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a knowledge of God himself. We're talking about understanding more about him. And by the way, that's what Bible study is all about. And that's why you're here tonight as well. That's why you've come out tonight. This is what Paul says. I pray, this I pray, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in discernment. That's what Paul wanted here. That's what he laid down. And we're saying all of this because Paul affirmed his prayer for the Philippians was that their love would abound more and more in this way. He's wanting their love to be not merely sentimental, but substantial. Grounded. And you know that is a wonderful thing. You see, when you gain these things, you gain a greater understanding even of what's happening. Sometimes what's happening to you, because the Word of God sheds light upon our lives. And what's happening in the world, even at the minute. Someone just reminded me yesterday, I phoned someone yesterday, and, and someone just reminded me, and we're, we're talking about the world, and, and how bad things are, and, and how dark things are, and someone just reminded me yesterday, but the Bible's told us it's going to be like this. That's like a light bulb going on. And it's the truth. What's happening? What God is doing even? And that's where the hope comes in. It helps us deal with situations, and it helps us deal with circumstances as mature Christians. It's because of these elements that Paul talks about here, that your love will abide more and more, not in a mere superficial, sentimental way, but in a substantial way that's grounded in knowledge and in discernment. Paul really prayed that for these people. And then listen to what he said in verse 12. Just as we move on a little bit here, there's something else to see here, but I hope, I really hope will encourage you. Look what he says in verse 12. But I want you to know, now here's why he's writing, or one reason why he's writing to them. I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Now here's a main reason why Paul was writing this letter. There's things he wanted the Philippians to know. I want you to know, he said, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. It's not a wonderful verse. What happened to Paul? Well, he was arrested for the testimony of the Lord Jesus. He was put in prison for it. But what he says here is this, all of that turned out for the benefit of the gospel. The things that happened to me has actually turned out for the furtherance, that's how you put it, the furtherance of the gospel. The reality of this is Paul's bonds broke down substantial barriers. 
It got him into a place, listen to this, it got him into a place where the gospel had never been. The imperial guard of Rome and things began to happen there because of it. Honestly now, that's what took place. Brothers and sisters, we don't know what God will do in our times of extremities. You don't know what God is going to do in those times when your back is against the wall. Because, I don't know if your experience, I'm sure it is, my experience certainly is the case. That's when I've really seen God working. I'm sure you're going to see him. That's when I've really, and there's a verse in the Psalms that says, the Lord is mighty in battle. And I've understood that to mean that's when you're going to see his power in the battle. When you're really in the battle, that's the Lord mighty in battle. We know he's mighty in all the time, every day. But in the days when you're battling, that's when you're going to see his might. The Lord is mighty in battle. Paul says, the things that happened to me have actually worked out for the furtherance of the gospel. Look at the word furtherance there. What this means is the gospel went further than it had ever gone before. The gospel actually went further than when it had ever gone before. It spread among the imperial guard of Rome. The Lord, through placing Paul in a prison, was able to penetrate the most elite guard of imperial Rome with the gospel. Paul's bonds brought down barriers. Isn't it wonderful? Doesn't it prove the Lord knows what he's doing? My brothers and sisters, can I say this to you before we just round off here and come to a, a summary and a conclusion? Can I just say in the light of this context what we're looking at here? I just let, let me set the context for you again. Here's the Apostle Paul, the great man of God, the great man who was set on following God's will. And he finds himself in chains. He talks about them often in this letter. His chains. He finds his liberty gone, his freedom's gone. His future's insecure. And he's in this prison dungeon in Rome. And it wasn't a holiday camp. And he's there. And here he starts to rejoice. He says, what happened to me? Actually, he worked out for the furtherance of the gospel. And he's rejoicing about that. And i got to be honest with you. I thought about this over the last couple of days. You only value this. When you really appreciate the gospel. Can I leave that with you tonight? As, as Christians together. You're only going to value this. When you value the gospel the way Paul did. Because here's Paul saying. My freedom. Just set it aside for a minute here. My liberty. My future. My privileges. Hey, there's something else happening here. There's something greater taking place here. The gospel's going further than it ever went before. The gospel's becoming more powerful than it ever has been before. The word, by the way, the word Paul uses for furtherance there is a Greek word that means specifically used in the advancement of an army or an expedition. The essence of the meaning is found in removing barriers, clearing away obstacles, and going forward. And that's what the gospel does. That's what the gospel can do. That's what's happening with the message of the hope of God. That's what was happening with Paul. God was using it. God was making opportunities out of it. And brothers and sisters, let's just stress again tonight, that needs to happen today. That has got to happen today. Because I personally feel the gospel is going to be squeezed in the coming days, in a way like it's never been squeezed before. People are going to try and annihilate the message of the gospel. People are going to try and sidetrack it and marginalize it. But listen, the gospel is needed more than ever. You know, the gospel's become something of a misunderstanding. It's, it's kind of, in people's estimations, a, a benign thing. When some people think of the gospel, they think of a genre of music. Gospel. Oh, I kind of like that. It's a bit upbeat. You know what Paul said about the gospel? It's the power of God. It's the power of God. If you're not saved tonight, 
The gospel will turn you inside out and upside down until you have nothing left. If you're not saved tonight, the gospel will deal with you like nothing else will. But I'll tell you what it'll do with you. It will put you on the right track. It will put you on the right road. It will sort your life out. It will shake you like nothing will ever shake you. Because you see the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will bring you to the foot of the cross of Christ. And it will say, come and die. Come and die. Lay down your pride. Lay down everything of yourself. Jesus said, you've got to take up your cross, deny yourself, and take up your cross and follow me. And the gospel will say, come and die. Die to yourself, but you'll find that you'll truly live. And that's what the gospel does. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I know it's the power of God. We've got to end tonight. The time is gone. But listen, just with that, Paul is saying here, the gospel's going further than it ever went before. Brothers and sisters, a passion for Jesus is a powerful thing. Your passion for Jesus is a powerful thing. Your passion for Jesus will do something. Your passion for him will change things around you and change people around you. Never, ever let's lose our passion for Jesus. Amen. Because Paul didn't do that, even in a prison cell. He was passionate about these things. Yes, my freedom's on the line, but hey, listen, the gospel's going further. The imperial guard are being touched by. The gospel's in place it's never been before. And listen, it can still work today. And we need it to work today. Let's just bow our heads for a minute. We just, Lord, will you bless your word to our hearts? Will you bless your people and all of us as we've gathered together right now? Oh, Lord, we're living in the part of the gospel. We pray for it, Lord. We pray that we will hold up and stop there. Not only with our preaching, but with our lives and our lifestyles. And may that power be let loose. And may we see the results of that for the glory and the majesty of your great name. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. I will serve thee. Cause I love